Good evening. This is evening prayer for Tuesday in Holy Week. Welcome to all that uh, have found this, and I hope that you find it to be a uh, meditative and, and prayerful experience as we continue uh, through the week and uh, continuing along in Jeremiah and uh, John's Gospel. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be sung by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life and to be glorified through all the worlds. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the shepherd of Israel, their pillar of cloud by day, their pillar of fire by night. In these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that in this pilgrimage of prayer, we might learn to be your people once more. In fasting and service, you bring us back to your heart. You open our eyes to your presence in the world, and you free our hands to lead others to the radiant splendor of your mercy. Be with us in these journey days, for without you, we are lost and will perish. To you alone be dominion and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let our prayers be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of our hands as the evening sacrifice. Psalm 94. <clears throat> o Lord God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, show yourself. Rise up, O judge of the world. Give the arrogant their just deserts. How long shall the wicked, O Lord, how long shall the wicked triumph? They bluster in their insolence. All evildoers are full of boasting. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your chosen nation. They murder the widow and the stranger and put the orphans to death. Yet they say the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob takes no notice. Consider well, you dullards among the people. When will you fools understand? He that planted the ear, does he not hear? He that formed the eye, does he not see? He who admonishes the nations, will he not punish? He who teaches all the world, has he no knowledge? The Lord knows our human thoughts. How like a puff of wind they are. Happy are they whom you instruct, O Lord, whom you teach out of your law to give them rest in evil days until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not abandon his people, nor will he forsake his own. For judgment will again be just, and all the true of heart will follow it. Who rose up for me against the wicked? Who took my part against the evildoers? If the Lord had not come to my help, I should soon have dwelt in the land of silence. As often as I said, my foot has slipped, your love, O Lord, upheld me. When many cares fill my mind, your consolations cheer my soul. Can a corrupt tribunal have any part of you? One which frames evil into law. They conspire against the life of the just and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold and my God, the rock of my trust, so the cat fell. He will turn their wickedness back upon them and destroy them in their malice. The Lord, our God, will destroy them. O oh, just judge of all the world, when the dark power of evil threatens your creation, may we, through your strength within us, maintain the sure knowledge of your love and mercy, which we see in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we approach our scriptures, I am going to check on the cat and have her sit alongside us.
Okay. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. A disaster for me, mother, that you bore me to be a man of strife and dissension for the whole land. I neither lend nor borrow, yet all of them curse me. The Lord answered, Surely I have strengthened you for good. Surely I have intervened for you against your enemies in times of disaster and distress. Can iron break the iron of the north and the bronze? Your wealth and your treasures I shall give as plunder without price because of all your sins throughout your territory. I shall enslave you to your enemies in a land you do not know. For the fire kindled against you in my wrath will burn you up. O Lord, you know, remember me, take care of me, and avenge me on my persecutors. However long your wrath endures, do not snatch me away. Realize that I suffer insult for your sake. When your words came, I devoured them. Your word was my delight and the joy of my heart. For I was called by your name, Lord God Sabaoth. I never sat in the company of jesters, amusing myself. With your hands on me, I held myself aloof, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my suffering continual, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? You are to me like a dried up wadi with waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you repent, I shall restore you to plead before me. If you distinguish between the precious and the base, you shall be as my own mouth. They will come back to you, but you must not go back to them. I shall make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to save you and rescue you declares the Lord. I shall rescue you from the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the violent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response, I offer a canticle, this one coming from the pen of Dame Julian of Norwich. God chose to be our mother in all things, and so made the foundation of his work most humbly and most pure in Our Lady's womb. God, the perfect wisdom of all, arrayed himself in this humble place. Christ came in our poor flesh to share a mother's care. Our mothers bear us for pain and for death. Our true mother, Jesus, bears us for joy and endless life. Christ carried us within him in love and travail until the full time of his passion. And when all was completed and he had carried us so for joy, still all this could not satisfy the power of his wonderful love. All that we owe is redeemed in truly loving God, for the love of Christ works in us. Christ is the one whom we love. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. We continue in the 12th chapter. <clears throat> Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. These approached Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and put this request to him. Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip together went to tell Jesus. Jesus replied to them, Now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a wheat grain falls into the earth and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Anyone who loves life loses it. Anyone who hates life in this world will keep it for eternal life. 
Whoever serves me must follow me, and my servant will be with me wherever I am. Whoever serves me, my father will honor. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And with Mary, we say these words. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our forebears to Abraham and his children forever. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. Let us bring to the Father our prayers of intercession through Christ, who gave himself for the life of the world. We pray for forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus. Lord, have mercy. For grace to seek out those habits of sin, which mean spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them. Lord, have mercy. For Christian people that through the suffering of disunity, there may grow a rich union in Christ. Lord, have mercy. For those who make laws and interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement, Lord, have mercy. For those who, weighed down with hardship, failure, or sorrow, feel that God is far from them, Lord, have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, Lord, have mercy. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. O God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. May our lives be so transformed by his passion that we may witness to his grace, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord of peace give us peace in all ways and at all times. Amen.